take two. Let's go to the Caribbean. I guess we are ready to leave, are we? Ooh, I'm ready. If you didn't watch our last week's episode, after two years sailing the Brazilian coast, we finally leave our country for our longest passage yet. A 2,300 nautical miles passage from Brazil to the Caribbean. Well, at least that's what we thought. On our first night of the passage, we got a huge leak on our diesel tank. And after two days trying to solve the problem of shore without any success, we decided to head back to shore and fix the problem. And now, 27 hours later, we believe the problem is solved. And it's time to try it again. So, wish us luck! Let's go to the Caribbean! Before we start this journey, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And after two years bringing the sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life, it's finally time to start exploring. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Sunday for a new episode. 12.29 by the time we unhook the line, so it's 12.30 on December 5th. See you in two weeks in the Caribbean. Let's do it. <laughs> Now is the time that I don't want to do it, but I need to do it. I need to check if we have diesel on the build. We are on the port tech, so if the leak is still there, I'm pretty sure we're going to have diesel on the build. We have water, so that's good. So that's probably water coming from the hose. So far, so good. Great news. Yeah, buddy. Yay, we made it. We're sailing, baby. Yo. It's been really tough to add this episode, and we thought we were going to do some nice voiceovers. But then we decide, why not just use our raw diaries? I wrote the diary that went to our patrons through Iridium and Roberta wrote a diary to send to her parents. And that's how we're gonna start this episode. This story starts on December 5th. Day one. We are leaving for the Caribbean. Now, with clean builds. Too bad we didn't have time to get to know the city of Natal that looks really nice. But the Caribbean waits for us. In the first hours, the swell was making the sea agitated. After my shift, I decided to lay down on our bed, which is on the stern of the boat, because I still can smell the diesel that still lingers in the wood of the salon, and I'm still very sensitive to the smell. I guess the fixing worked. So far, we don't have leaks at all on our diesel tank. We had just a small problem with our steering cable that jumped off the block right on our first squall. I guess it's just for us to get back into the sailing groove. <laughs> Life's good, so have to be moving again. We reached right in time for the rain. Yeah. And after work, we just had another problem. I hear a noise on the rudder quadrant. I, I, I knew there was something. And what happened is this steering line right here went in between the block and support. So went in between here. Somehow I managed to pull it off. This is really strong line. This is Dyneema cover with Dyneema core, so it's pretty strong. And I also tied it up a little bit, the line. Now it's much better. That's the good thing about doing everything yourself, is that I know exactly how the quadrant works, how the steering line works, because I installed the whole thing. So whenever I hear a noise, I'm like, hmm, I know that, and I see. And I, it's so good, because you feel confident that you can fix. And that makes it much more enjoyable to sail, but I'm tired. Now I think it's time to try the wind vane in place. I'm gonna first set up the vane. We are on autopilot in 45. When I say let it go of the autopilot, you hold hand steer for like five seconds and I'll connect and we let it go. Right now, sailing at 60 degrees apparent, doing five and a half to six knots and using our wind vane instead of the electrical autopilot. That's so cool. So we decide to try the wind vane for the first time on this trip and it's working flawless. It's so awesome. It's steering so, so well. Natural. Caribbean, here we go. While everyone is down there sleeping and resting, I was just sitting here and looking to the wind vane and just thinking, it's amazing, it's just so awesome. You have like something behind the boat, that there is no electricity, there's nothing else, it's just like a mechanical piece that steers the boat so well, we're doing so well, like the course is just like steady, and so that's pretty, really, really awesome. December 6th, day two. Good morning, what a beautiful morning, I just woke up. My shift now is from 5 to 8. Seems like we're still on the same track as before when I went to bed at 11. If we keep on this track, we are pretty much going straight to the Caribbean. We don't feel the motion of the boat, so comfortable. Right now we are doing 
six, seven knots. I'm so happy that the leak on the diesel tank is done. No leak so far, so it's, if it didn't leak until now, it's not gonna leak, it's all good. So I've been up for four hours now, sailing by myself, and the weather is just beautiful. Just going downwind, and now the wind is shifting a little bit, and that makes us a little bit sideways to the waves, so I think the perfect solution to put the spinnaker pole for the first time up. We've been working on this pole for so long, that's gonna be awesome to try for the first time, but I need to wake up Robert and I need to wake up Ben. Duca called me at 9 a.m. to help him to arrange the sails. Our autopilot has been disconnecting from time to time and someone always needs to stay in the cockpit in case it happens to restart it. And we need two people to put this pole up because it's on the deck, so it's gonna be much, much easier with two people. Once we install the pole, we can go back downwind and with the waves and that's gonna be much more comfortable and that's awesome because we get more speed we are all here should we do it the idea is to follow the genoa and then we are gonna put the preventer on the main and then we're gonna point downwind and then we're gonna put the spinner cup in place with the sheet already going through and then we just open up the genoa that's the idea So, supposedly, we have the boom ready. Do we? Yeah, it looks good. Whisk your poles out. The sheet's already on the pole, so now we just need to open the genoa and see what happens. Done. Wing on wing, first time. That's awesome. Nice. Another test is going on as the wind's light. We are gonna roll this Genoa and put the other one out. Now we're gonna see if it's easy or hard to roll, throw, whatever, the Genoa with the pole in place. So we're gonna try to fix the angle situation on the track. We're gonna put a block on the tow rail and I think it's gonna work. Yeah. Big Genoa up. Beautiful, wing on wing with the huge Genoa and the full main. That's just so awesome. Caribbean, here we go. Today was pretty much a perfect day. For the first time, we probably say we straight down wing, wing on wing, and better for the entire day. The wind was light, but we were flying. Many times with eight knots of apparent wind, we were doing seven, seven and a half knots. Sometimes surfing at eight knots, but the boat was so steady that we felt like we were sailing at three knots. Perfect sunny day. We reheated the rest of the chicken and potatoes inside the rest of the lentils. Leftovers. So we just realized that we have been using the autopilot for a while, since yesterday night, and the battery is almost full. It's just so amazing that we used the entire night, we've been using the entire morning, and we already are like 9.3% 9, 9 full on the batteries. That's And we have the fridge and the freezer oh, yeah. working. Also the chart plotter all the time. Yeah, all the electronics are everything is on except the radar. The radar is not on because we don't need right now. It's, there's no like calls the or anything. Radar is on. We are sending messages to family every day and patrons. You, that's impressive. Sometimes I look to the sharp plotter and we're yeah. in like 8.2, 8.5 on like 8.5 wind behind us. That means we of course need to add up both speeds, but we're doing so good. Feels like we're not even moving. Yeah, yeah. We were saying be early before that. We need to pay attention when we are going to cross the equator because we might be relaxing here and we cross the equator and we don't realize. So yeah. we need to pay attention. Yeah, we still have like 4 degrees, 11 minutes and 506 seconds. It will be there. Two days, I guess. I started writing this diary this afternoon and I realized the importance of it. I'm already forgetting some things. Luke is playing guitar and we already sang songs by Brazilian singers like Ana Carolina, Nando Reis, Legião Urbana and others. We're gonna take the pole out before it gets dark because the forecast is predicting winds of 20 knots or maybe more, 30.
So without the Genoa, we lost two knots of velocity of the boat. We were doing like seven something knots and now it's like five, four. The sun is going down soon and you see the moon. Such a nice day, it's gonna be full moon today, it's gonna be so bright. I don't know if you remember, but we visit a museum in Salvador that this guy made. And I'm reading his book and he went from Natal to Granada, so I'm reading how was his experience and he's arriving in Granada right now. It's good. So happy to be offshore and on our way to the Caribbean. Oh, and our course is basically downwind, straight to Granada. But of course things won't be that easy the whole way. In a couple of hours the wind is supposed to pick up, so we are already on our night mode. It's more Genoa with the main on the first reef. Trying to keep 130 degrees with the wind. It will be a beautiful night. The moon was full and the sky was clean. The sea tonight was at a strength that we are calling 3, ranging from 1 to 10. Second night of the trip. It's a beautiful night. The moon is huge, huge, huge. And the sky is just like pink right now. And Hope is cooking some noodles for us. It's gonna be awesome. We had two reefs on the main sail and the small Genoa with a reef. And we had winds of up to 22 knots and a boat speed of over 8 knots, which is kind of a lot for our heavy boat. December 7, day 3. 8 in the morning, it was my shift again, and I saw flying fish. We had strawberry yogurt and they had coffee. I'm avoiding coffee a little bit because I've had a little bit of gastritis. So I'm taking the opportunity to do a caffeine detox. I made rice for lunch and a red made feijoada from a vacuum sealed package. The best. It tastes like homemade. I'm very proud of Duca who didn't get seasick with all we have been through with the diesel. I'm still feeling a little bit sensitive with the smell of diesel so I'm moving calmly, I'm avoiding sweet foods and that's how I'm avoiding being seasick. Things are starting to get a little bit fishy. <laughs> See what we can catch today. It's a little rough. And then twist that six times. And then you just take this, pull it tight. It's survival. You know, like people need to eat, people need to survive, but we're gonna eat fish. I would love to eat fish. Good morning, by the way. Good morning. I think I heard a bat. I was just wondering how long it's gonna take until we get the first fish. I think two hours. One hour and a half. Half an hour. I'm off. You might, you might be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the trick is to put around the wind so you can hear a noise when you get a fish. Now you need to wait and hope for the best. Waiting for the fish. 15 minutes has passed by. No fish is yet. I want a game and game already. That's good. Good news. Just put the wind vane in place. It's working flawless. I'm like, let's see if the wind vane is gonna work downwind with waves. The first big wave, and we are rocking. Oh, good. Yeah, we need to save some energy because we used the autopilot the whole night and was really strong the wind. So that means the autopilot worked really hard, and if the autopilot works hard, you use a lot of energy, and that's the beauty of this beautiful wind vane is that it doesn't use any energy. So we can right now make some energy from the sun. We using our solar panels. Yeah, so right now the solar panels are making some extra energy and we can just not use, just store for later. Ooh, this helps a lot actually. I love this extension that we made. It's raining a little bit. I think it stopped already. It's like two minutes of rain, but at yeah. least it's a fresh water. It's good to wash the deck a little bit. get some shade also. And also for shade, it's gonna be good. It's been over four hours that we tried this one and we didn't get anything. So no, now, nice. yeah, Ben, don't think the Squid is a good one, but I think it's a local one, so it's, it might bring some, so I don't know, <laughs> some lucky. So we're gonna try this squid now, that we bought in Recife. Nice. Yep. All good back there? I'm just checking the quadrant. So far, so good. We also don't have any oil in the build. All good. I guess now I understand when people say that after three days in a passage, it's when you get comfortable. We are on our third night since we left Natal, and now it seems like we lost track of time. At the same time, it feels like we left Natal a month ago, but also it feels like we left yesterday. Right now, we are trying to reach a coordinate that Giovanni, our shore support, sent us. He said we are going to find even more favorable currents. Supposedly, we arrived there in 20 hours, but to be honest, it feels like we are already there, because we are flying right now. December 8, day 4. It was a pleasant night and the sea had calmed down. We are almost crossing the equator. Woohoo! Morning, someone's gonna go to bed. Oh, better. And I'm starting my new shift from 8 to 12. Beautiful day out. We are flying 8 knots on 
12 knots of apparent wind speed right behind us. So we're doing really good. On the north of Brazil, there is a current going around the corner of Brazil. And that's so good because it gives us like a speed of, I think, like two and a half extra knots. That's a lot. I'm reading Busca do Oriente by Aleixo Belov, the first guy to solo circumnavigate from Brazil. And this is his second book, his second circumnavigation, when he decided to do a, uh, a slower one to stop in more places. And of course, I want to read the one with more places. And what I'm reading right now is him arriving in Grenada and doing the same crossing we're doing right now. And that's so cool to see the difference between us today with a region on the phone that we can have like um, the forecasts, we can talk to our shore support, we, we have like all the information we need here and him with nothing, just a sextant and how hard it was for him to approach Granada to know if he was arriving in the right place and to know if that was the anchorage he needs to go and everything it's pretty cool even though I think it was really nice back then I also think it's really nice right now because you give another layer of, I don't know, strategy you have another thing to think about but also not having all these gives an extra layer of creativity and uh, imagination and everything else you know, different that's so cool, we are four days at sea and it feels like yesterday, at the same time it feels like a month ago, I don't know, we just kind of got lost of track of time, it's pretty cool that everyone say that after three days of crossing you get used to it and everything seems the same, and it's kind of true, it's just like, just one more day, just hang out, hang out on your shift, or after your shift you go to sleep and then you make food and then you eat and then you rest and then you talk to your friends, to your lovely wife, it's pretty good. Today it was a record for us. We did 173 nautical miles in one day. We are doing 7.7 .7 knots of speed with less than 10 knots of apparent wind at 106 degrees. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we have only the main sail with no Genoa. I just love this current. It's the second time we go wing on wing and we're just flying downwind. It's amazing the amount of lines that you can see from here. Just like a, a boat, there is like so many airboats specifically, there is so many lines. That's the surprise for tonight's dinner. So the mince is already with a lot of seasons. I have some pepper, two kinds of pepper, sour. I'm gonna fry this first, so fry the mince, then add onions and garlic, and then I add cabbage and corn. Beautiful. Let's serve everyone because on a boat it's easier if we serve everyone. First one to the boss. Let's go now. Just just to make sure. Mm, very good. So we've been working really hard today, sitting on our butts, going <laughs> downwind, wing on wing, like eight knots all day. You can see it's super flat out and took us through such a delicious meal to reward ourselves and all the hard work we've done. Um, here it is. Ooh, first presentation. It's beautiful. We have lots of different colors here. Mm. Flavor is excellent. Mouthfeel is pleasant. <laughs> I would recommend this to a friend. Not bad. Our boat rocking. Yesterday was my day of cooking and it was the worst day so far <laughs> rolling on the boat. Yeah, that was impressive. You did a good job. <laughs> what we've been doing for the past days, we sail in one setup during the day and when the sun sets, like right now, as you can tell the light, we put the setup away and we 
start a new setup. In this case, we are doing wing on wing with the spinnaker pole out, and we don't want to go through the night with that because we might have some squalls tonight, and then probably we'll have some squalls tonight, and we don't want to deal with squalls with the spinnaker pole out. So right now, we're actually a little bit off track to the port side, and we need to go a little bit more towards the starboard side. And in order to do that, we're gonna take the spinnaker pole out, and then we are gonna just jive the Genoa, and then we have like both sails on the same side, and we're gonna set like, 20 degrees more towards the starboard side. Do one more. Just like that, we're ready for the night. It's much better to sit here during the night and think that I don't need to do any maneuver on deck. And right now we can have a squall up to like at least like 30 knots and it's fine. We don't need to take a second reef, it's all good. And we have one reef on the main sail, the jibs south, and we are doing we did 8.7 a while ago. Now it's 7.5. Basically what we've been doing for these three days is communicating to our shore support and every day he gives us a waypoint, sometimes two waypoints, so we can follow the current because the current here variates the distance to the shore and if we keep on the current we have like two and a half knots in favor but if we get out of the current we might have one and a half two knots against us so it's really really important to be able to know where is the current the iridium in order to download the current is so much heavier than the wind so we instead of download the current we just talk to him we message him and he say go to this waypoint and from this waypoint you go to that waypoint and we are all good this is working so well and we've been rocking i think mm -hmm. odd never flew that fast it's comfortable it's really now, today it's been so comfortable. Yeah, yesterday was not so much. Last yeah. night was like rocking yeah. so much. But it's so good. It's I part thought, of the game. I thought the boat was gonna touch the spreader in the water while I was in the bed like whoa. It's so good. It's, it's part of the game. I mean like in order to have a good day you have a bad day and then the bad day it makes the good day even better. Yeah. Whoa, the color of the sky is just amazing. Yeah. Just another day in the office. December 9th. Day five, the day we cross the equator. Food is almost ready. And rice, and we have leftovers. Great. Entry. What's going on? I think it's time for a shower. I'm gonna for, go for my first shower of the trip on the back of the boat. I think I'm gonna wait one more day. Good luck. <laughs> a little bit scared, but. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta That's do. That's so good. I think I'm gonna stop filming because it's gonna take a while. <laughs> Fourteen and a half miles to go to get to the equator line. Yeah, getting clean for the equator. If water wasn't a problem, I would take these showers like three times a day for sure. Yeah, eventually you need to get a water maker and then showers every day. I feel like I just woke up and like I have a full day ahead of me. I can do a lot of things, even though it's like 4 p.m. already. You can do a lot of things. You can cook, you can bake, you can clean the house. True, you can even watch a film. I have some films <laughs> <down already. laughs> Time to go? Yeah, I'm excited. Oh, yeah! <laughs> That's what we worked for. We refit the boat for two years so we could take showers in the middle of the ocean. That's so awesome. I love it. <laughs> First idea was to dive into the ocean, but we are doing the velocity around six knots, seven, 7 now. Seven right now. And we don't want to slow down, so this idea was successful. Was, was killed. <laughs> was killed. And right now, even if we stop the boat, I'm pretty sure we're on like two knots of current. So we're going to be two knots even without sail, so it doesn't make sense. If we have a calm, we're gonna swim on the ocean. But I don't believe we're gonna have a calm. There's no calm. <laughs> Nutrition day? Nutrition day. Yeah. I'm using the rest of your fruit before they go bad. So take it easy. We've been cruising for so long, it's amazing. Like we, since we left Natal, no engine on, not even for five minutes. It's just like hardly lower than five knots speed usually six six and a half seven sometimes eight knots of speed we're doing so good it's amazing Ooh. the corner is gonna be i think like in five hours from now we're gonna check if the toilet's flushing to the opposite side <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the most funny thing we sent a message to iridium to my sister and my sister posted on our instagram group for our patrons and one of our patrons james he said make sure to check if the toilet's flushing to the opposite side because that's how you know you're in the north hemisphere 
That's gonna be weird. I never thought about that. Let's see how is the is statistics here. If the first one is since we left Recife. So we've been saving for 141 hours and 51 minutes. We sang already 828.1 nautical miles and we did an average of 5.8 nautical miles. Today, since midnight, right now is 3.40 p.m. Average of 6.5, that's not our top average. Yesterday was the top average forever on this boat, I think. That was 7.2 nautical miles average. We reach over 173 nautical miles in 24 hours and that's just awesome. On the meanwhile, some cake is being made. It's actually a crumble. Crumble? so good to be like a few days in the crossing because you get used to the boat and it feels like we're just in land. You don't even feel like you're moving, you can do everything. You go to the bathroom, you go cook, you make a cake, you take showers and everything. Watch it's just movie. watch a movie. We watch series today, We are uh, even Netflix. We watched two episodes mm -hmm. of our series on Netflix that we download in advance before we left because we have no internet. For years I dream on the day that we can actually travel and feel good while traveling. It's not like, oh, we need to arrive, we need to arrive. No, just enjoy the day and enjoy the, your time because I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know, three months from now, we're gonna miss being out far away from land and just on the oceans crossing. And what? And we can go again. We are 100% used to the boat and the boat to us. Great food and even a salt water deck bath today. This makes all the work we have done in the past years make so much sense. Another 28 nautical miles and we will cross the equator. It smells really good actually. 10 out of 10. It's 1 out of like 10. 1 out of 10? You're Man. When you post a video on YouTube, there is a little box on the studio, on the analytics, that says how good is your video compared to the, your last 10 videos. So 10 out of 10 means you are the worst video out of oh. the last 10 videos. <laughs> and that's the worst like feeling. You need to have, you know, like when you post a video and it's like 1 out of 10, it's like, yes, I did it. At least in the top 3 out of 10 of my life, probably. Given our uh, current surroundings, I'll, I'll give it a 1 out of 10. One out of ten. <laughs> and a strong reaction. Mm. Mm, I didn't like it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Two miles from the equator, and someone's gonna celebrate with what? <laughs> <laughs> we brought a guarana. Yeah, this is a treat. You know, we're crossing the equator. We need a treat. It's so cool to follow the chart and see the place we are passing by. Even though it's still Brazil, it's a so far away Brazil to us that it seems like we are in a different continent. <laughs> we are about to cross the equator and we need to film this moment, so we better decide that we need a like, proper light. Around 7 p.m. it was Duca shift and we crossed the equator. Okay, oh. get in there. Less than a minute now. Are you crying, babe? No. <laughs> I'm just wet because I put the, the can on my face. The can is wet. I think you're crying. No, I put this can that's... Oh, I think you're crying too now. <laughs> 12, oh. 10, 4, Four three, 3, 2, two 1. <laughs> and we cross the equator. That's, that's something so important. It's just a can of soda. That's it. That's all. <laughs> We're in the North Atmosphere. Oh, it shows in now. Check this out. How do you feel on the North Pole? The same as not on the South Pole. It's not a pole, first of all. It's not a pole. It's an equator. Yeah. Just the best more. From 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. it was my shift and there was a little bit of rain, winds of maximum 15 knots and the boat was moving at the average of 6 knots. Then came Duca's watch with gusts of 24 knots and the boat surfing sometimes at over 10 knots. I didn't see any of that, I slept super well. Good morning, day 6. During the night was rolly and it was no wind and then too much wind and no wind and too much wind. I mean, we could sail the whole night, but it was like really light winds, and then I squall, and then the squall would go up to almost 30 knots, and then like 10 knots, and then 30 knots. We have good news. Odd sailed really well, and we have a speed record for Odd. So we had 10.9 knots of boat speed, while we were 130 degrees from the wind, and we had 24 knots of apparent wind speed. That means like close to 30 knots, 32 maybe, of real wind. So that was really, really fast, and now it's just a calm day again. Blue skies, that's good. That's great. We are so happy. For years we read books about the feeling of crossing the equator and I could only try to imagine this feeling. Today we got to experience. It's crazy to think that we took our home from the South Hemisphere to the North Hemisphere and that now, instead of having summer in January, we're gonna have summer in July, at least for a while. Life is really good aboard Odd. We are enjoying each moment. The boat is still flying down this amazing current. Today I made chicken, potatoes and sweet potatoes on the oven and everyone loved it. Who would imagine that I would be cooking on the way with the boat rocking and no seasickness? I thought I would get seasick for sure. This has been an amazing experience for sure and I will miss it. Oh, no squall so far tonight. 
has been sunny every day and if it rains, it's only at night. A little bit of fresh water to wash the boat and start a new day well. I think we have a fish. Fish, 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 fish. Yeah, fish. Yeah, fish. <laughs> I got shit <laughs> How can you do that to me? <laughs> I was so excited. Here is like a desert. There is nothing. There is no fish, no dolphins, no whales. Sorry, I needed, to, I needed to do it. I, at least once. You know, yeah, I know. Whatever. <laughs> Expect something. You guys left me here on my shift by myself, bored, nothing to do. I need to do something. Kids. Kids. I think I'm gonna put the big Genoa. We are doing like six and a half knots, sometimes seven, but I think with the big Genoa, we can be a little bit faster. So far, nothing broke on the boat, and Odd's proving herself as a great traveling buddy. Caribbean, we are coming for you. We never been that close. I just started my night shift, and I was curious about our stats, so I look out on the sharp plotter, and for my surprise, we have already sailed 1032 nautical miles, counting since we left Recife. Odd has been sailing so well, and so far, we did an average of 6 knots of speed over ground. But more than that, it's making us feel really safe and comfortable. At the beginning of the night, I saw some bioluminescence in the water. When the boat touches the water, it throws the water to the sides and the bioluminescence makes everything beautiful. We have been reading books, mainly from Brazil, from people that have been done the same legs we are doing right now. I was reading again the book called Rapunzel, about when they went to Granada. A family that left Brazil in 1992 straight to Barbados, in a sister boat, just like Odd, with a few modifications. Marcel writes really well and I always read his writings with a smile on my face. Once someone asked him, how do you leave everything behind and go on a trip like that? And he answered, in fact, when you dream as long as we dream, when you plan a journey like ours, you don't simply leave important things behind. It happens that some are being replaced by others equally important within the travel plans. Others take place as nostalgia and accompany us all the time. And finally, there are a few that lose their importance and disappear from our lives. December 11, day 7. My shift today is from 5 to 8 a.m., one of my favorite shifts as I watch the sunrise. The sea is very calm and it seems that we are at an anchorage as we are following the sea currents. Today we reached another awesome milestone. We passed the halfway mark in between Recife and Granada. That's so exciting. This past day we had really light winds, but thanks to the strong current we didn't need to start the engine, as even with almost no wind we are still doing over 3.5 knots of speed, so we decided to be patient. We are trying, if possible, to only use the engine when we arrive. So far the current is helping a lot, but supposedly in a couple of days we're gonna have a lot less current and also we might have no wind. Well, fingers crossed. We are really excited for this week, as the forecast shows a bit stronger winds. Yeah, but there's always a but. The forecast also says that the swell is gonna increase and also instead of coming from behind, it's gonna come from the beam. And in this way, of course, it's gonna roll a lot more. Well, let's wait and see. We cooked brigadeiro today, our favorite Brazilian candy. As it's Sunday, there is a brigadeiro going on. You know, our tradition, we always cook brigadeiro that's a Brazilian candy on Sundays, why not do when we are on a passage? And also we have no wind almost now. It's the first time that we are like, like we have a lack of wind, but we have three knots of current. So we're still doing like three and a half knots, we're not going to start the engine. You're just going to drift until the wind comes back, hopefully. It will, it will come back. So it's the first time in seven days that the wind's like two knots. <laughs> we had a little bit of rain, like five minutes of rain. Yeah, it was it's so much more fresh than before. It was so hot. We needed the rain actually. It was really good. Yeah. What a nice Sunday. But the trick of this dessert, don't tell anyone, <laughs> is that you need to pretend you forgot and it burns a little bit. You need to, yeah, I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm talking and just like, oh, it's burning. And that's the good thing. <laughs> so right now I'm forgetting it's gonna burn a little bit. It's all good. When you forget, there is a little bit of uh, caramel. It's like Yeah, caramelized. because you burn, you burn the bottom. See, it's starting to burn the bottom. You need to have like these little burn parts on the bottom. And that's what we call the heart of the brigadier. That's the little, mm -hmm. <laughs> Just another Sunday at home. We have a documentary. That's a brigadeiro. No matter where we are in the world, we cook brigadeiro to feel at home. And we are actually home, even though we are in the middle of the ocean right now. That's just awesome. Cheers, guys. We hang out in the cockpit around 3 o'clock and enjoy the beautiful day. We made pasta with bacon and cabbage with onions for dinner. Oh, we have two days left to cross the border of Brazil. The moon has not risen yet and the good thing of it is that we are able to see so many stars. Today we completed half of our journey and it's been really nice. 
We are super close to the equator and I thought it would be hot around here. But I'm wearing a jacket. It's actually quite chilly. Day 8. I really need to wash my hair but I don't want to. I wish it was clean. Ben's trying to. <laughs> Are next? Yeah, of course. As Duca says, it's good to have days like this without worrying about much more than the boat, the direction, where we are going and what we are going to eat or read. We are not editing videos, not answering emails, not reading messages on YouTube. We have just to sleep to rest when it's not our shift to take care of the boat. And that's the job. I love this part of the job. I can't take the dirt on my hair anymore and I had no choice but shower. It's not something that I want, but something that I need to wash my hair. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, baby. <laughs> Can we consider that this is the tradition from crossing the equator line? Something really hard for me to do. We use the salt water to rinse and use fresh water just to remove the salt at the end. In this way, we save water in the tank. Well, to be honest, I like to feel clean, but for me, the first bucket will be always torture. The first bucket gives that shock of reality, but then it feels good. That's good. Oh, now she's enjoying. I told you, it's good. I could be swimming instead of doing this. No swimming. We're moving at five and a half knots. Thanks, babe. <laughs> You know, you should trust me more often. Something weird is going on. The depth sensor was marking like 20 meters, even though here it's supposed to be 700 meters, and then showed like 19, 18. I believe there is either a lot of fish on the bottom of the boat or a whale could be, I don't know, who knows. That's weird. Let's hope it's fish. What are you doing there? <laughs> Trying to fish. So we decide to try to film if there is fish under the boat or what can we see under the boat or if there's nothing it's just magical of the sensor. Let's watch it now. After two days of low wind, we are finally back moving at more than six knots. Our goal is to reach a waypoint in between the border of Brazil and French Guiana by the end of the day. Then, when the bit stronger wind arrives, we can turn a few degrees to the port side and have a much more comfortable ride. We have already sailed 1,361 nautical miles since we left Recife on December 2nd. And we still have another 850 nautical miles to go. Life's good. December 13, day 9. It's 2 a.m. and Duke is arriving to take over his shift. I can already hear the toilet flushing and I can't wait to lay down on our bed to the snoring of the autopilot and rocking of the boat. That makes me feel like a baby being rocked to sleep. I finished one book and I started another one. On my shift tonight, I caught heavy rain, 29.4 apparent knots of wind and we were moving 9.2 knots. Big milestone, we finally crossed the Brazilian border. We are now sailed in front of French Guiana. Today has also been the most dark day. Cloudy, scaly and rainy night so far. It's one skull after the other, with lots of rain. But nothing that strong. I think the stronger one was at Roberto's watch. Well, we knew on the second part of this trip we would have a lot more unstable weather. But at least it brings some wind. December 14. Day 10. <laughs> with waves and wind coming from the starboard, the boat's like a washing machine today. We had what we call almojanta, which is lunch and dinner together. It was barbecue sausage in the oven with sweet potato, English potato, cabbage, onion, garlic, two fingers of water, some spices, and you could put a little bit of whiskey. The movement of the boat's different every second, and we never know what to expect. What's bad now might be good later. Because our boat's made out of steel and it's super firm, we hardly hear the noise of furniture. I only hear some objects inside the cabinets, the water in the diesel inside the tanks, and water hitting the hole. Apart from these noises, we might be always alert for new noises, because they can be a problem. Next milestone. We are just crossing the border between French Guiana and Suriname. As predicted on the forecast, we still have great wind and some waves splashing on the beam. Doing great progress. Our speed average for the last 24 hours is 7.2 knots and we are surfing really constant at over 8 knots. If we keep flying like this, we will be in Grenada Sunday morning. What an amazing passage this has been. 
Except for the small problem on the start of the trip and the lack of fish, we couldn't ask for more. What happened? <laughs> just got splashed by a big wave. I was trying to put the fishing line out because, you know, you never know, we need lunch. And then the wave came in like... Oh, okay. good. We are sailing on the wind vane because we need to save some battery. We did the mistake of leaving the radar transmitting for the whole night, like two days ago and ever since. We cannot keep up with the battery, so we are trying not to start the engine and so far we managed but last night we got to 40% of the batteries and we don't want to get that low so now we're just on the wind vane trying to <laughs> sorry yeah we're just trying to pop up the batteries today hopefully we can use the wind vane the whole day and then we're good oh good life's good enjoy what do you say December 15th day 11. On my shift everything was fine at night but afterwards it was difficult to sleep because there was rain, strong winds and side waves. Good morning. Yeah, today is day 11 of the trip. It's been just awesome. Last night, I mean, last night was the worst night probably since we started. Uh, we didn't have too many squalls but we had so many waves sideways and the boat was just like being smashed sideways. But you know, it's part of the game and one day bad out of 10 really good, so it's awesome. And now it's already sunny out, the ocean is much more calm. I think might be a little bit smaller the waves and also the angle I, I think is a little bit better. And I don't know, supposedly if we keep on this speed we might get there in three days. Can't wait to arrive there and see what's like. I have no idea what's gonna be like. And I think our lives are gonna change so much once we arrive in the Caribbean. We are gonna, I don't know, we're gonna discover new cultures, new food, new place. We're gonna have clear waters, finally, some really, really clear water. I, I'm really excited, I think it's gonna be awesome. And I'm really proud of Hobera that, you know, never done any ocean crossing before. Me, I, I never done two. But I was like, I was more confident that I would take the seasickness, that I would actually enjoy the trip. And Hobera didn't get seasick not even once. I didn't get seasick not even once. Ben didn't get seasick, so it was a really good trip. I mean, it's still is because we didn't finish yet. So it's happening officially. The sun doesn't want to help us, even though it looks bright. There's so many clouds that the sun is not charging enough the solar panels. So that means we are right now with 40% of batteries, and we are using the autopilot with these side waves that use a lot of energy. And that means we might need to start the engine just to charge a little bit the batteries. The goal was to go all the way from Brazil to the Caribbean without starting the engine. We wish we could do it. We did so far. We've been 10 days sailing with, without touching the engine. But unfortunately, it's time. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta stay safe out here. You gotta do what you gotta do. Let's do it. It's weird how time changes. Hopper is right now reading a book <laughs> from a family that did what we were doing 30 years ago. And everything she tells me about the boat, it's completely different from what we are doing because, you know, just technology change. For example, right now I just received a message, a notification on the phone from the Iridium uh, to have some updates on the weather. So the way we are getting our forecast is through Iridium satellite phone by using the app from Predictive Wind called Offshore app and we can have like the tracking. I don't know if you can see properly, but I can update our tracking every day and see how is the forecast. And the way I communicate with Giovanni from Metplan is through Iridium also. And I just got a notification that he has a new message. It said, let's see if he has a new waypoint for us. And the cool thing is that now he gave us the last waypoint. And after this one, he said, just go straight to Grenada. That means we are on the way to Grenada. We are getting there. <laughs> so that's how we talk. So basically it's like WhatsApp, but it's not WhatsApp, it's just like email. I send him an email, he answers and comes as a message. And also we can send emails to our family every single day. Yeah, I mean like, I, because traveling is one thing for us, but it's a different thing for our family that's on land. Yeah. And I think it's also important to make them feel secure, otherwise we are, you know, making their life too harder and we don't want to put that on them. We would love them to have all great news every day. And the, another cool thing, I, I didn't mention this one, three, four weeks ago, and we went to this Distance Shore 4, the boat from the YouTube channel Distance Shores and I became really good friends, message friends with Cheryl from Distance Shore so she been sailing for over 30 years so she's like can I get your Iridium number so I can send you random messages every now and then to make your crossing better I'm like of course so we've been chatting every day like every day in the morning she wakes me up and hey good morning and we ask how was the night and it's really pretty cool yeah I have my good friend Cheryl Cheryl thanks so much for making my message pass by much quicker because I have a friend to communicate. And me. Oh, of course. And books. And books. 
I think I read already like four books. I'm reading one that he passed by exactly the same place you're passing right now, but a hundred years ago. <laughs> a completely different point of view. He also talks about the current. Ah. All the time. He talks about current all the time and about the shadows. If you get close to land, there is like a lot of shadows around here, but we're like a hundred miles from shore, so it's fine. I forgot to mention that for those who are outside in the cockpit, there is always some snacks. We have got crackers, biscuits, some nuts, cornflakes, dried fruits, and so on. December 16th, day 12. The sea was very rough and the waves were a little bit bigger. I think this was the worst night so far. Oh, it was hard to sleep. How was your watch? A little rolly. <laughs> 33 knots of rolling and as you can see a little bit of moisture made its way into the cockpit some big uh, seas came and pooped the cockpit <laughs> pretty exciting but not too bad just a little like beady right the waves are hitting us right on the side of the boat or the beam of the boat but and how so about the velocity of the wind um we saw 33 knots okay and one not small. too bad though <laughs> Not too bad, but it's like enough wind to be like, oh, it's windy. <laughs> yeah. And inside the boat's terrible, it's so hard to sleep. We have been sailing with side waves and the cockpit's really wet, so I can't sit on my favorite places. Two more days? Yeah, like, like a, day, there. a day and a night. A day and a night, almost there. <laughs> It's funny how it's not comfortable to be on the ocean like rocking that much but at the same time you look out and it's, it's kind of pretty don't you think it's just like you see the power of the ocean you, you like you can feel the power with so many waves it's pretty cool all right see one bird and one flying fish one flying fish how big was it flying fish is really cool it's the, on this trip was the first time i saw flying fish i never seen before and i was like there's something weird in the water and flying so far I'm like oh it's a flying fish that's pretty cool just as predicted, we have good wind tonight and every night until we arrive. So, even though we have a lot less current, we're still doing good progress. Doing top speeds of well over 7 knots and averaging 6.3 knots for the last 24 hours. Life's good aboard, except that I'm losing for Ben at backgammon game. I still have hopes that I'm gonna turn this game around, fingers crossed. It's a little bit windy today. Have a little snack out there. <laughs> so good. If we turn on the stove now, the boat's gonna be just so hot. And right now it's already really rocky, and it's better to keep the temperature down. So that's good. That's good. It's amazing how the wind vane is holding so well. The ocean is really, really tough, don't you think? Yeah. Really, really stormy. Like you swell coming this way, swell coming that way. And the wind vane is just like sometimes get a little bit lost and goes like from 105 degrees with the wind to like 70. And, and that's when there is a wave that comes and get everything <laughs> everything wet. <laughs> yeah, it's like a big wave when that happens. But we just wait patiently and the wind vane bring the boat back to place and keep going on the right course. But yeah, it's just so weird because like when it turns sideways to the waves, it's just like a huge wave and even though it's like completely on the wrong position the wind vane just like you know a little bit patient and come back come back come back and send it we're on the right track again 116 117 degrees and save the battery and we are saving battery <laughs> december 17 day 13. good morning right now it's blowing like i don't know 18 20 knots of wind we are doing six knots six and a half of speed we're doing pretty good yeah, this trip has been like all about sailing. We sailed the whole way since we left Natal. We didn't model once. This is every single time we're sailing and every single time we're sailing really well. Let's see some statistics so you understand how well we're sailing. So since we sailed already 2033 nautical miles and we did 6.2 average of speed. That's really good for this boat. This is a really heavy displacement boat. So 6.2 average is really go good for this boat. Of course, there's a lot of current that helped us. Right now, there's no current, and we are really, really, really close. That is probably the last full day of sailing, and tonight's gonna be the last night sailing, and then tomorrow, lunchtime, we arrive in Granada. That's gonna be so awesome. And now, let's enjoy our last day on the ocean, because we are for sure gonna miss this, because, of course, you get tired of being like 12 days on the ocean, but once you go to land, and once you're anchored for like a month, two months, you're like, oh, I wanna go to the ocean again, because it's beautiful. 
by the way I'm really 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 proud of the whole crew nothing went wrong except the diesel tank in the steering line that we fixed that was fine it's just like you know boats break and that's normal but other than that like everyone worked so well another way yeah I need to shut off the camera because every now and then comes a wave here and splashes everything as you can tell everything's wet because we have side waves it's funny we didn't close that door because they're like, no, nah, water, here we never get water, just get in the bow. We got so much water. Last day. Last sunset. Last time I think the whole crew together on the cockpit. It's funny how you live for like 15 days in a boat with three people and you don't sit together that... No. Uh, you do, but the, we actually do because we play games while Roberto is on the watch. I mean, I'm losing the game. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm just like... Play games, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just like... Maybe the camera got tired with all the gaming <laughs> explanations. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, I, I get sad, but it's all good. It's, it's fair like, game, it's fair game. It's like all we do, it's like that, read, eat, and then watch yeah, it's, for both. It's, right? it's watch them and eat them and... <laughs> I'm in my fifth book <laughs> for this trip. Yeah, right. This is a good one, actually. It's Maiden Voyage. Maiden Voyage, yeah. Oh, it's really Maiden Voyage. Yeah, it's really well written. <laughs> 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 One more shower. <laughs> Today a wave entered the boat and hit the nap station. I can't wait to arrive tomorrow in a calm bay and open the hatch to ventilate the boat, to do the cleaning, take showers and get to know a new place. We didn't have time to research the location because we were focused on preparing the boat and editing the videos. But in the end, not knowing about the place makes the place even more interesting. We are here, the bag is here, but we are gonna pass close by during the night and we are not gonna be able to see it. How is there, Captain? So, this being marinating for three hours, that's already sauce that I tried to get it better. Now we're just gonna cook some rice and we're gonna have dinner. Last one, it's important, last dinner before we arrive in a different country, in a different, completely different place, it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait, this is gonna be so cool. Almost there, we can already feel we're getting closer to land. Right now, we have three different ships around us to pay attention to their course. Last 24 hours, as predicted, we had great wind. During the night, a second reef on the main and a jeep. I'm so excited to write that we are on our last night of our first long passage. Right now, we are only 15 nautical miles from Tobago and 19 nautical miles from Grenada. All just surfing downwind at 8 knots of speed. Waves are still high and confusing, but no, part of the game. But now, let me go, because next time I hope to ride from Grenada. Caribbean, we are coming for you. December 18, day 14, the last day. We are arriving in a few hours. First country that odd will arrive outside Brazil. Yes, we did it. I wish you could all see and hear what I'm experiencing right now during my watch. The rocking of the sea, the moon lighting up, the bioluminescence in the water, the breeze that hits my hair. The same breeze that has been taking us from one country to another for the last 13 days. It's crazy to think that if it weren't for charging the batteries for the total of 45 minutes, we wouldn't have consumed a single liter of fuel and we would have traveled more than 2,200 miles. My last night shift on this passage has come to an end. So I brushed my teeth, I washed my face and went to bed. Last sunrise for this passage, that's so awesome. We finally see Grenada on the horizon. We are so happy. Luca woke me up 9 a.m. saying, Land ho! 16 miles away, so that means we need to wake up for better. We are riding. Okay. I think it's Land ho. That's the mess the boat is on a passage. That's the way it is. We are sleeping on the living room. There. And there. Because on the other rooms, it just rolls too much and makes too much noise so here's better it's easier to come out if you need 
I think the camera won't pick this up when I see them after already. Ta -da. Ta -da. I had to squeeze my eyes as I was still waking up to be able to see a stronger shadow between some clouds right on the horizon. Land ho! Finally, after 13 days, we're arriving in Granada. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Pretty proud of us. Really, really proud. Of us. Thanks for coming with me and being my partner. It means a lot. I bring you bad news, but I bring you good news. So the bad news is, of course, I lost the World Championship of Gammon from Brazil to the Caribbean. But at least my pride is a little bit less <laughs> hurt because I'm gonna win the last game by really far. Fair, fair game. Fair game. That's good. I lost. I'm gonna have a tattoo to remind me not to gamble. You cannot gamble. Now we can pay attention to now the legs. <laughs> so we calculate this trip to be 2,200 nautical miles. And when I press here, it's like exactly, exactly the number. We did an average of 6.2 knots. I thought it was gonna be like five knots average. <laughs> nice planners. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. We see birds. Yes, you're arriving. Oh, 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 dolphins, dolphins, dolphins. Seriously? Yes. 20 miles from Granada. We got closer to the land and many dolphins and birds came to welcome us. After 13 days seeing almost no life, suddenly we got this warm welcome. Finally, the dolphins came to say hi. They came to welcome us to Granada. All right, love this place. I dreamed of doing long passages for so many years and I finally got to have this experience. And I need to say, I just love it. But to be honest, I can't wait for some french fries. And I guess that's a wrap. I hope you like this little simple diary that I wrote every single day and I send this message to our patrons through Iridium. That was awesome. It just feels like we have more people on board when I just write this little message and feel like we are just connecting to people even though we are in the middle of nowhere. Thanks so much to everyone that made this journey possible and a special thanks to all our patrons. We we'll see you guys next Sunday.